Okay, I want to talk about this really cool Laporte three fracture case. So this was a 52 year old male who presented to the emergency department with a chief complaint of seizure, but was amnestic to the event. He didn't remember it. His primary survey, just looking at him, suggests he had some kind of trauma. He had a GCS of 14. Blood pressure was very slightly elevated, but he had stable vital signs. On physical exam, he had periorbital edema, left-sided. This picture is, is not the same patient, but you get the picture. He had an upward gaze palsy. He had a hemotympanum, which is in the bottom right picture, without battle sign. He had an afferent pupillary defect, but his dentition and airway were intact. So we got a CT scan of his head, face, and neck, and honestly, his whole body, because uh, the story wasn't really clear. So CT findings essentially showed a uh, right-sided Lafort 3 with a left zygomatico maxillary complex fracture in an orbital blowout of both the lateral and inferior orbital walls. The inferior rectus muscle had herniated through the orbital floor, leading to entrapment. And then he had several other fractures as well as pneumocephalus. He was admitted to the surgical ICU. He was given some pepera, and then all the specialists, including neurosurgery, oral maxillofacial, and ophthalmology, saw the patient emergently. So let's talk about the fort fractures. These are facial bone fracture patterns seen in blunt trauma, such as car accidents, assaults, or falls. And because of the bones that are involved, they always involve some form of mid-face instability. They can be classified as type 1, 2, or 3, depending on the bones, and we'll go over those. And generally speaking, they have a low mortality. However, depending on the mechanism, they can be associated with other life-threatening pathology. So here you see the three categories of uh, Lefort fractures, type 1, 2, and 3. Lefort 1 is a fra horizontal fracture across the anterior maxilla above the palate extending into the lateral nasal walls and pterygoid plates. And this just has sort of dental maxillary instability. A Lefort 2 in the middle picture is extended up into the zygomatico maxillary sutures, the nasofrontal suture and the frontal sinus. This is, uh, includes disruption of the inframedial orbital rim. And these patients can develop an entrapment of the extraocular muscles, orbital hematomas, globe ruptures, et cetera. And then Lefort 3 on the right is obviously the most substantial, and that's a Lefort 2 that extends laterally into the uh, inferior lateral orbital walls, the pterygoid process, and the zygomatic arch. Those patients have essentially complete separation of the mid-face from the cranium and similar complication patterns to Lefort 2. The vast majority of Lefort injuries occur from low-velocity mechanisms like a fall from standing or assault, and then a little bit less than half from high velocity mechanisms like car accidents, fall off a roof, that kind of thing. Higher grade Lefort fractures are associated with an increased risk of skull fractures, close head injuries, and neck injuries. In sports, you see mountain biking and skiing as the most common sports to have a Lefort fracture. And uh, there is a high association with drug and alcohol use, and those associations increase the risk of severity of your Lefort injury. Diagnosis. History and physical exam should increase the clinical suspicion and you should have a sense of what's going on. However, diagnosis is made with a CT scan. Here on the right picture, you can see a uh, Laporte fracture. Well, you can't see the entire fracture, but you can see uh, inferior orbital uh, floor fractures bilaterally with tons of blood in the maxillary sinus. You can see a lateral orbital wall fracture on the right side right here on the left side of the screen, right side of the patient. This patient had bilateral Lefort 3s. Management, the first step would be to follow your ATLS algorithm for other injuries. You know, airway may be necessary. You might be able to endotracheally intubate them. They may need a surgical airway. Goals of management of Lefort injuries includes restoration of the facial projection. People want to look normal. Uh, height and proper occlusion of the um, the bones. 60% or about two thirds of cases require surgical management. About a third can be managed conservatively and 10% require nothing. Those would typically be your Lefort ones. Mortality of a Lefort one is 0%. Those patients typically do well. However, Lefort two and three have a four and a half and nearly 9% mortality associated with them. 
Associated injuries include hard palate, dentition, and mandible fractures, which are more common and make management of the Laporte fractures more difficult. You can imagine the surgical challenges get greater as there's more fractures. About 1% of patients will have some kind of spinal lesion or spinal cord injury. About five, excuse me, about six to 8% have some sort of ocular injury, such as retrobulbar hemorrhage, retinal detachment, et cetera. Almost half have some flavor of dental injury. So our patient, he was uh, admitted, he went to the operating room. We had an open reduction internal fixation of his left orbital floor. This is not our patient, but you get a sense of what that might look like. No further head bleeding or intracranial lesions. He was discharged from the hospital four days after admission and was doing well uh, in terms of facial swelling and pain. However, his vision had a poor prognosis. He was following with ophthalmology and at five weeks follow up, he had persistent vision loss to light and perception, or excuse me, to light perception. So three key points about the four fractures. The first is that there are a spectrum of facial fractures seen in the setting of blunt trauma. They require surgical uh, consultation with an ENT or maxillofacial surgeon, and many of them require surgical fixation. And they are associated with other injuries such as orbital lesions, cervical, and intracranial insults.